Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're checking out the Dell XPS 15 today. This is a premium Windows 10 laptop from Dell and this one looks a lot like the XPS 13 we looked at a year ago except it's bigger. That's really the big difference here. It's got a 15 inch display uh, with a 4K option. This is the 4K display we'll be talking about in a minute. Uh, it also has an available discrete GPU so you can get a uh, Nvidia GTX 960M installed on here when you're purchasing it. Uh, so if you're looking for something with a little bit more graphical horsepower that might be just a little bit larger, uh, I think this is the key advantage of the 15 over uh, the 13. Bigger display, better available GPU. Now I should mention in the interest of full disclosure up front that Dell has provided this laptop to the channel for this review. Uh, they're going to allow us to hang on to this for future videos, so this is not going back to Dell uh, after this is completed. However, uh, Dell has no editorial control over what you're about to see. No one is approving this video before it is posted, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and there was no other compensation provided for this video. I think it's always important for YouTubers to make and transparent disclosures. That is what I do here on the channel, and you can read up more about my policy down below in the video descriptions. All right, so let's dive into the hardware a bit now and see what this one has equipped. Now, there are a lot of choices as to how to configure this computer on Dell's website. It's actually really confusing, so I'm going to focus on what this one has and then I'm going to make a recommendation as to what I think the sweet spot is if you are in the market for this. So this one as equipped is $2,100. That's with the 4K display, a quad core i7 Skylake CPU. It goes up to three and a half gigahertz. You've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, three by three wireless too. So it's got very fast wireless capabilities. I don't think you'll really notice the difference over the two by two wireless that's been on most computers up until uh, this year, uh, but it's still fast nonetheless. And this one also has the the optional GPU, a GTX 960 M from NVIDIA. So it does uh, perform very well. It'll do well on gaming as well as video editing and other things that could make use of a high powered graphics processor. Now you do again have some choices as to how you want to configure this and if battery life is important to you, uh, the 4K display is not going to bring it to you that way. So uh, you only get about six hours or so out of the uh, touch display here with the 4K. That's in my testing and that's just doing things like I'm doing here, just browsing the web, moving some windows around, doing some word processing and that kind of thing. Uh, doing anything more than that will drain that battery faster. So the display really takes a lot of juice to power it. Uh, you can turn the brightness down and try to get a little bit more out of it, but I don't think you're going to do much better than uh, six hours or so uh, on light tasks with it. So the 1080p version of everything you just saw here is also available. Uh, that one is about $1,800. So you save some money. You'll probably pick up an hour or two, maybe even three hours of extra battery life as well, just because that display doesn't require as much power to operate. And I think that's probably the sweeter spot if you are planning to use this away from a power outlet for extended periods of time. They do have some uh, external batteries you can get for this thing, but I think if you really want battery life, go with the 1080. It still looks nice at, at this uh, the screen size. 1080p at 15 inches is a sweet spot for me, uh, and I think it'll look fine. Again, this 4K display looks beautiful, uh, but the 1080p one will do just fine. You'll save yourself some money and some battery life in the process. Linus Tech Tips reviewed the 15-inch version uh, with the 1080p display, so uh, definitely check out his video if you want to see what it looks like. Uh, so it'll give you an idea as to maybe the, uh, the aesthetic differences. This uh, touch screen has a very nice glass uh, uh, covering on it, a Gorilla Glass covering, but you won't get that on the other one, but it still, I think, looks, uh, looks very, very nice. So let's step through some of the ports on here. Uh, you've got your power port, of course. You've got USB 3.1, uh, so you can go up to that newer, faster USB 3 standard. HDMI out here, also USB Type-C, and this USB Type-C plug also has Thunderbolt, and Thunderbolt is a different technology, but works through the same port, and uh, this will bring the promise of a single cable to bring everything to your laptop. So if you are uh, sitting at your desk and you want to use a larger monitor, you can plug in one cable, power, network, everything you can think of can go through a single cable and up you go. I use a similar technology on my Mac, although uh, that's Thunderbolt 2. Thunderbolt 3 now is going to be using those USB Type-C connectors, so you do get uh, one of those on there. There's also a combo headphone microphone jack on that side. Over here, you've got some other stuff. We've got a uh, card reader here for reading uh, your camera memory cards. You can stick that in here and you can see how that works. So there you go. Uh, you also have a, another USB 3.1 slot and a battery indicator plus a lock here for locking it down on a desk with one of those uh, Kensington locks or something like that. So uh, you do have some security so nobody 
somebody walks off with your uh, $2,100 laptop. It's pretty lightweight also. So this configuration with the, uh, the GPU and the 4K display and the larger battery, again, there's too many choices on you, you even have battery choices. Uh, this weighs about 4.4 pounds. Uh, that is about uh, uh, two kilograms. The uh, version with the lighter uh, display and the uh, lighter battery will go for 3.9 pounds or 1.78 kilograms. So about four to four and a half pounds, depending on how you configure it. Uh, pretty lightweight, uh, really nice to work with there. The one issue though is that uh, unlike the Mac, which will open up with a, a single uh, effort here, you have to hold down the base to uh, lift the display up. So that's one thing that um, it lacks in elegance that the Macs might have, but uh, that's one little thing. Everything else on here is really pretty nice. I like the keyboard quite a bit. It's the same keyboard that they have on the XPS 13. Really comfortable to type on. Very, very pleased with that. Uh, Dell has done a tremendous job on the keyboards. We actually interviewed Donnie Oliphant, who's the uh, designer of these devices. He's the product lead, and he talked a lot about what goes into a keyboard. I'll put that interview linked above. Really interesting stuff. We may try to get him back on again. The biggest improvement over last year's Dell's is the trackpad. It is so much better. My biggest gripe on the trackpad last year was that it was very, um, it, it didn't always get your gestures. So if you were trying to do a two finger scroll, there was like a slight delay. It's an issue I've seen on a lot of other trackpads from other uh, manufacturers of Windows devices. Uh, they've done a much better job of reducing that delay uh, significantly. So it's very good at uh, two finger mouse usage here. So I'm holding down my thumb here on the click pad and moving this window around. It's responding well to that. Uh, you can see as I'm moving my fingers across here, there's very little latency between the time that it detects a two finger scroll and when things execute. So they have done a tremendous tremendously good job here improving the trackpad, which was, I, I think, the biggest uh, fault I had with these given they were premium products last year. They have uh, dramatically improved that. Uh, one other thing, though, to keep in mind is when you have it on your desk is to keep this vent clear uh, because this is the air intake for the GPU and the CPU. It sucks the air in here and then uh, spits it out uh, underneath the screen here. So you definitely want to keep that airway clear so I would avoid using it on carpet or anything that blocks those vents on there. You definitely want to keep those clear on there. So that is the overall hardware. Let's now put it through the test of uh, performance. We're going to look at uh, all the things we usually do, some gaming as well as some Photoshop too. So let's have a look. Now in lieu of our usual web test, I want to show you uh, the webcam on this thing because it goes without saying this is going to perform very well as a web browsing device. Uh, my biggest gripe though with the webcam is the fact that it is uh, down down here in the corner. So everything that you do with the webcam is going to be angled at a weird direction upward. This is the same problem they had with the uh, XPS 13 as well. And the problem really is that there's no room for the camera anywhere uh, but down here in the corner. So uh, everything is going to be kind of when you're using it, let me get rid of that message there. Uh, everyone's going to be looking up at you uh, versus looking directly at you because of course most laptops have the webcam located at the top. So not the best webcam. The microphone quality isn't great on it either. So those are the only two things that uh, I think really are a shortfall on this device. This might be distracting the people that you're talking to. Uh, so you might want to look at maybe getting another webcam that you could attach to it somewhere to make it look a little bit better when you're doing uh, web conference calls and that sort of thing. But even running at 4K is going to do things like word processing quite well. So it almost goes without saying again that uh, this is the kind of computer you'll want if you want to do a lot of high-end desktop publishing. What's nice about the 4K display is that uh, text is very clear and crisp as you're working with the device here. So uh, you shouldn't have any problems there whatsoever. It's also great for photo editing too. So we'll pop open uh, Photoshop here and you can see how uh, this all comes together as well because again you've got a lot of processor horsepower in here. You also have the nice display on the 4K version here uh, and of course you have uh, the GPU to assist with things as well. The one thing I noticed that Apple does a little bit better on their trackpads is that uh, it's very good at detecting the differences between precision control and uh, just kind of scrolling around. So one of the things that I found was I've been playing with Photoshop on here, let me zoom in a little bit, um, is that it um, is a little bit harder to get the precision scrolling here as you can see uh, because the mouse is kind of tuned to one setting and one setting only. So if I'm trying to draw uh, a lasso around this area here, um, it's a little bit harder to get a finer control because it really is got one setting for those controls versus something else. So as we're working on this photo, it's a little bit harder to work with this trackpad than it is on my Mac, but uh, it's still quite better than where I've seen a lot of Windows trackpads before. So we'll go ahead and uh, do some content aware fills here. You can see how very quickly it uh, works on that photo and we can uh, take out some people in the photo without disturbing the rest of it here. So really fast for this kind of work. And I think if you're looking for a good desktop publishing device, uh, this one will certainly do it for you. 
All right, so let's take a look at our GPU tests here. We'll take a look at Minecraft first, because I know a lot of people always want to know how Minecraft runs. So we've got about uh, 80 frames per second or so, give or take, running in uh, 4K resolution right now. So it works really well there. Uh, we're seeing well over 200 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed with this is that uh, games on the 4K display can get a little bit flaky because uh, some of the screen scaling settings confuse a lot of games. So you definitely want to uh, play around with it a little bit. Rocket League was a great example where I had to turn off all the scaling and make everything very small on the screen for Rocket League to properly recognize what screen resolutions my display could support. So it's probably a bug in Rocket League, but there are some issues you might encounter with games uh, depending on how you have some of your screen scaling settings set at. If you're running into trouble, uh, leave me a note. We might do a follow-up video on that. Another thing to point out is that the speakers on here are on the bottom, uh, so they come out at the front of the bottom of the computer. Not the best place for them. It, does, it sounds okay, but it really depends on uh, what surface the speakers are sitting on. So you know, different things will sound differently. With all the room up here, it would have been nice for them to have put the speakers uh, in the front portion here of the laptop, kind of like how Apple does it. So uh, not crazy about the speaker location, but uh, they do sound good. Uh, they're loud, but it will vary based on what surface you have it on. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about performance and price. And we're gonna use uh, Grand Theft Auto V as our launching off point for this discussion but also show you some benchmarks in a minute as well. Uh, before we jump into GTA 5, I want to show you just the settings we're running at. I'm going with the uh, optimal suggested settings from the NVIDIA GeForce experience here, and they recommend running at 2048 by 1152. I was surprised they didn't recommend 1080p on here, so we'll just uh, optimize that. Uh, we'll launch the game, and when it's loaded, we'll take a look and see how it performs at the suggested settings. Then maybe we'll tweak it a little bit from there. All right, so we've got GTA 5 loaded up here. We're actually doing very well on frame rate right now, at about 100 or so frames per second, which is pretty remarkable. Again, at that slightly higher resolution than we uh, started out with. This game does vary, though, depending on the environments that you're in. Uh, so, you know, different parts of the game sometimes perform differently, but you have that quad-core i7 processor, which does make a difference. We've seen that before in some of our other uh, videos there. So let's uh, take this uh, a little step further here and see if we can drive it in 4K now. I think we'll see a definite uh, degradation in performance when we do that. But let's go over to graphics here. Uh, we'll crank it up to uh, 3840 by 2160 and apply those changes here. Uh, we are running above the, uh, the recommended uh, video memory here. It's only got two gigabytes of video memory on board, but uh, we are now at 4K and we're looking at about 30 frames per second now on that uh, thing there. So it's actually still playable, believe it or not, uh, but you'll probably see frame rates well below 60, definitely in the 30s or less at 4K, but it is capable of keeping up with that. Now, if we did turn up a lot of the graphical quality on this, we would see a very dramatic decline in frame rate, both at uh, the recommended resolution as well as 4K, because this is not the fastest mobile graphics processor out there, but it's certainly capable of running modern games at a decent frame rate with you know, perhaps some choices to be made as far as image quality is to be concerned. Now, you'll remember a couple of weeks ago, we looked at the Dell Inspiron 7000 series. It was an $800 gaming PC that had the very same graphics processor that this computer has, I uh, had a little bit of a slower processor, but you know, an i5 versus an i7, but uh, same processor family. In fact, I think you can get that uh, less expensive computer configured very similarly to how this one is configured. This expensive laptop actually performs about the same as less expensive ones do. So let's start with the uh, 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark. And on that one, uh, we get a score of 16,784. Now look closely at uh, the frames per second we're getting compared to the Inspiron 7000, which again has that same GPU. They're almost identical because they have an identical GPU. We do see better performance on the physics test because that involves the processor, and there we definitely see uh, the combination of having faster memory. This has DDR4 memory versus DDR3 in the less expensive Dell. Uh, so we see much better frame rates there, but uh, for things that are very graphically intensive, uh, we get the same performance as an $800 computer. So on the Fire Strike test, which is a much more demanding test, also from 3D Mark, we get a score of 4,030. And as you can see here, on the graphically intensive portions of that test, we get very similar results. We see a little bit of a disparity in things that tax the CPU more because this one does have a faster processor and a little bit faster memory, but by and large, it performs the same. So that begs the question, if you can spend $800 from the same company and get the same performance as their flagship model, uh, why would you do that? Well, I think it comes down to basic engineering and what you're looking for. If uh, the best possible performance for the lowest possible price is important to you as a consumer, uh, then you have that ability now, which is what's been great about where the PC market has been going, because you can 
now uh, get a discrete GPU along with a really nice, uh, very up-to-date Intel processor for $800 or less. It's remarkable, especially with a 1080p display, no less. But if you need more than that, if you need something that's lighter weight, that has better battery life, that has the USB-C that looks nicer, uh, better materials, this one's got carbon fiber on the top here as well as aluminum all, all around, uh, then this is the choice for you because you are going to be spending more for the better engineered computer that had more investment made to uh, get that level of performance into a package that is more portable. So that's really what it comes down to. So uh, for a lot of folks watching the channel, you're going to be fine with that $800 machine. But I think, again, if you're looking for something more than that, that, where you want the performance and uh, all the portability and the battery life on the 1080p version of this, uh, then I think that is why you spend more. And we're starting to see more of this now working its way into the PC market. We see a lot better stuff at the low end and much nicer built stuff on the higher end, which I think is going to be great for consumers moving forward because there are uh, so many choices now that we have uh, out in PCs where we didn't really have that many before. So that's the Dell XPS 15, and this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.